Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a video that has been requested a lot. I did a similar video maybe a year or two ago, but it's time for a new version. So what I'm going to do today is talk about how I record my guitars and how I get my guitar tones. What the gear is that I use, what the signal chain is, which settings I use in my DAW, and hopefully I'll give some helpful tips along the way as well. Maybe at first, to some, this setup may seem a little bit complex, but I assure you it's actually very simple and straightforward. So let's dive in and start right at the source of the noise, the guitar of course. Obviously to get a great tone going you're gonna need a good guitar. I have a bunch of different guitars from brands like Gibson, ESP LTD, Schecter, Fender, etc. They all have various pickup types, various scale lengths and also various tunings going on. But they all have two things in common. One is that they all are strung up with Elixir strings, my favorite brand of strings. I love those strings, they sound great and they last a very long time, so they are worth the money. Since I started using those years ago, I just never looked back basically. Other brands of strings like Ernie Ball for example, they just sound a little bit dead to me by default and they don't last nearly as long as Elixir strings. So I can highly recommend using Elixir strings I'm not sponsored by them in any way, but it's just a product that I really love and that I stand by. And two is that I have them all set up pretty well with nice and low action, so for easy playing and fast playing, but with a very minimal amount of fret buzz, so there's a very nice balance there between tone and playability. For me, a guitar has to feel good when I play it in order for me to make it sound good, if that makes sense. If it doesn't feel good, then it's harder for me to make it sound good. And obviously it really helps when your guitar is intonated well, but of course good pickups really help too. And like I said, I use all sorts of pickups like Seymour Duncan pickups, EMGs and Fishmans, whatever suits that guitar. But whenever I get a guitar with a pickup that just doesn't sound good to my ears, which doesn't happen often, but it happened recently with my Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s, then in that case I just swap them out to make sure that the guitar sounds good from the source. So again, like I said, in short, Make sure that your guitar tone is good from the source, start there. Or else it's going to be very hard or near impossible to make that guitar sound really good with a bad pickup or with a bad set of strings or bad intonation. That's just really hard to fix. And what I also think that's really important is that you got to play your parts with confidence. Play your parts like you mean them and don't be afraid to put some force behind that pick when you play when required. Now I don't mean that I hit my strings very hard all the time with my pick, but just play with some confidence and play like you mean it, like I said. And overall, just playing your parts tight rhythmically can really help to make your guitar tone much, much better. It's pretty hard to make sloppy guitars sound great, if you know what I mean. Now my main audio interface is my Fractal Audio XFX3. It's connected to my PC via USB. And I also like to use my Line 6 Helix rack for that same purpose. Both of those devices are great as an audio interface, but of course they also have great modeling and great effects, etc. And also great routing options, additional inputs, and DI recording capabilities. So when I record my guitars, I sometimes like to go just straight into the input of the audio interfaces, so straight into the Helix or straight into the Axe Effects via the front inputs. But other times I like to go through my little pedal setup over here, in case I want to use an effect like a Digitech Whammy, a wah pedal, freak out to simulate feedback and stuff like that. And these are all effects that I basically want to print on the DI. So it's basically a part of the performance. And that little blue true bypass switcher that I have is handy for switching the effects in and out. And it still lets the signal through when these pedals aren't powered. So I don't have to power all these pedals in order to let my signal go through it, which is quite handy. I recently did some testing with how I hook up the power to all these pedals. And I now have it set up so that there's no additional noise added when I add the switcher and the pedals to the chain, so that's great. So now I can always just connect my guitar to the switcher and use it whenever I like. And the signal is basically exactly the same as when I'm going in front of the interfaces, so that's also great. The tone isn't really affected by the switcher. All of these pedals, aside from the whammy, are also going into the same power adapter from Harley Benton. I also tried using individual adapters for each pedal, but that did lead to more noise, and we don't want more noise, do we? Now one of the main reasons why I choose to use my Axe Effects and my Helix as my primary recording interfaces is that you can record high quality DI tracks alongside your processed signal via USB. 
So basically unprocessed dry signals straight from the input alongside amp modeling and stuff like that, which of course is very handy for reamping. So I always do that with no exceptions. I always record my dry DI track alongside processed signals. Now, a lot of times when I'm recording or when I'm in my creative mode, I just like to record with my modelers with a nice preset with an amp model that sort of suits the sound that I'm looking for. So basically an amp model that sounds similar to the real amp that I have in mind for later. And I often just lay my tracks down like that for me to reamp them later. So a sort of processed scratch track basically with the dry DI tracks alongside them muted. And then later I usually reamp those tracks with a real amplifier or something like Line 6's Helix Native, which is a great plugin by the way. It's basically very convenient for me to have one of my favorite modeling platforms. So in this case, the Line 6 Helix in my DAW, just for instant tweaking and automation and stuff like that. It's just amazing. And by the way, all my bass tracks are always processed via Helix Native as well. Now, when I record or reamp my real amplifiers, I basically always do that through my XFX3. And the main reasons for that are one, that the noise floor on the XFX is much lower than the Helix in a setup like this with a loop with an amplifier in it. And that's probably largely due to the fact that I'm using the Humbuster system, so the special fractal Humbuster cables. And that really helps to lower the noise floor when you're working with real amplifiers in a loop. I think that those cables basically disconnect the ground on one end of the cable. And two is that you can load many, many more IRs into the XFX than on the Helix. So that's great for management and IR browsing and stuff like that. So I basically create a sort of effects loop preset in the XFX where I route the DI signal through the actual amplifier. So the Humbuster cable comes out of one of the outputs on the back of the XFX and goes straight into the front of the amplifier. But sometimes I'll use a pedal like a Tube Screamer or some other kind of boost in between there. So then the cable goes from the XFX into that pedal and then into the amplifier. And from there, my amps are always being fed into a reactive load. And my current reactive load of choice is the Red 7 Amplification Amp Central Reactive Load, which is an excellent reactive load with some great features, but most of all, a great core reactive load tone. It really responds well and it sounds great. Very realistic, basically. I did a full demo and review of that device on the channel. Do check it out if you're interested. From the line out, the signal is being fed back into an input on the back of the XFX. And from there on, the signal usually goes into a noise gate to eliminate some unwanted noise, which of course does happen with tube amps and stuff like that. And then the signal is being routed in an IR block. So for IR cabinet processing, or sometimes I bypass the IR block and do the IR processing in my DAW with some sort of IR loading plugin like Libra. Sometimes that's just more convenient when I want to experiment with IRs and swap them around and stuff. And the XFX presets that I use with my real amplifiers are very simple, as you can see. So again, usually there is a noise gate in front of the cab. So after the amp, basically, just to eliminate some noise caused by the chain, the loop and the tube amps themselves. So again, my guitar goes through some pedals that I sometimes use and then into the front of either the XFX or the Helix. The signal gets recorded via USB into my computer alongside the DI tracks. And then when I want to record or reamp with some real amplifiers, I just make a loop in an XFX preset and also route the DI signal through that. So it basically is a quite simple setup. Now let's also move on to the PC where I also have some important things to note. I use Windows computers. I'm on Windows 10 at this time. And I recently got a brand new PC with an Intel Core i7-11700KF 8-core processor, an MSI Z590 Pro motherboard, two internal SSD drives. One is for the system, and that's an M2 500 gigabyte drive. And then a normal SSD drive, a four terabyte one, so a very large one, which I use for all my active projects and stuff like that, basically. So all my audio basically gets recorded straight onto that large SSD drive. I also have things like a good video card and good memory, but that's not really important for this video. However, I did make one sort of large error when I bought this PC, and that is that I chose a PC with glass panels. Unfortunately, with electric guitars, this can lead to more EMI, so electromagnetic interference. And that's basically the reason why my PC is behind my desk. So as far away as possible from my guitars, the further away from my guitars, the better, because when I get closer to the PC, the noise also increases. And that noise basically goes straight into your pickups. And with pickups like P90s, for example, that is very unmanageable. 
Now I did try to shield the PC with copper tape and grounding and stuff like that, but it didn't really help to be honest. It just didn't make a huge difference. However, I just think that this new PC is a little bit more noisy than my old PC. But now with the PC behind the desk, it's much more manageable and there hardly is any noise in my recordings, luckily. Now I did encounter another noise problem with this computer when I just got it and that was noise that went over the USB cable. When I got this new PC and when I first connected a tube amplifier into the loop of my Axe FX, I noticed that there was some unwanted noise going through the tube amplifier. Some digital noise, basically the sound of a processor or something. It took me hours and hours to find out where this noise was coming from and in the end I figured out that the noise was coming over the ground through the USB cable, so the cable between the PC and my audio interface. Now luckily I found a device that can solve this problem, which is the iFi iDefender Plus. So my active audio interface is basically always connected to my computer via that. And this basically filters out all the unwanted noise that's coming through the ground of the USB cable. So for me, it's a lifesaver. So with a setup like this, you gotta be careful to eliminate noise and eliminate ground loops. Just be careful about that. And, and other things that I've done to help with these sort of issues is also like connect everything to the same outlet. Because these problems are quite common with a setup like this, when everything is connected together and everything is hooked up together. So luckily now I got my noise levels to very manageable levels. So that is great, I'm very happy about that. Now, as you guys probably already know, I like to use IRs or impulse responses for my speaker, cab and mic tones. And my IRs of choice are York Audio Impulse Responses as they are excellent. They sound great and I basically love all the cabs and speaker options that York Audio has to offer. There's a great selection of both classic and modern cabs that are easy to use and most importantly, they sound very realistic. So they have a huge impact on my guitar tone and they really help to make my guitar sound professional and real and realistic basically. And then in my DAW sessions, I tend to use a very little amount of processing on my guitars. And when I find that a guitar signal isn't good enough, I usually go back as close to the source as possible to tweak there, instead of resorting to using EQ or anything like that to sort of fix it after. And that's one of the reasons why I try to avoid using EQ on my guitars as much as possible, because to my ears it somehow makes guitar tones a little bit more unnatural when you use EQ on them. So what I'd rather do is go back to the amplifier and tweak the actual amp controls or choose a different IR or both. What I usually will do though in terms of processing is apply a low cut on the guitars at about 80 or 90 hertz depending on the part and the tuning just to make room for the kick drum and the bass guitar. And I also like to double track my guitars especially for heavy rhythm parts. So I play the parts twice and pan one all the way on the left and the other all the way on the right. And that's it basically, no magic tricks or anything like that. So I try to keep everything as simple and basic as possible. I just always aim to get the sound right as close to the source as possible. So first the guitar has to be right and the pickups, then the amplifier, and then the IRs. So no EQ on the guitars, if something isn't right, I go back to the source, so back to the amplifier or the IR basically. That's all for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below as that really helps the channel out and it will help to keep you up to date on all my activities. And also let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on my setup and let me know if you have any questions about my setup, maybe I left some things out, I don't know. And you can also follow us on our Grudge Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.